Hey humans, you're joining us on set today of day three of a commercial shoot for Logitech. I've been working with the dialect agency on this promo for Logitech G's 2021 sim racing competition using their latest racing wheel. We're shooting three sequences that are all designed to cut together, same set, but dressed differently for each scene. So we're doing London in the early morning hours, the US about midday, and then Tokyo at night. So we're going for lots of neon vibes and fairy lights and grooviness like that. So I'm gonna give you a little walk around and just show you how we've set some of this stuff up, give you a sense of how sets are built and how we work with them. The brief for this promo is to show Logitech's racing wheel being used by players of varying skill levels all around the world, from keen amateurs to professional racers. The concept is to use a series of match cuts to seamlessly move between three international locations as the three gamers prepare themselves. <laughs> So part of this thing is that essentially the, the structure of the building, the structure of the set is the same in each place, but we're dressing it really differently. I kind of helped a little bit with the production design side of things and tried to make some suggestions in terms of how we could just make some changes in terms of certain structural elements. And so although they're the same layout, it does still feel really different rather than just dressed differently. And so for example, on the UK and American um, sets, this door frame had a kind of a hole for a latch for a door for the usual kind of doors that we have in the West, whereas for the Japanese set we've just gone with a clean nice piece of wood as though this would be a shoji sliding door. Um, the only other sort of main structural element we did was to change the windows, so each window of each set is very different and so although all the sizes and spaces are the same, those windows really make it feel like this is a different place. So we've got Jake, our grip, who's working the dolly and essentially he's making markers all along the floor and he's keeping time of every shot that he does. Essentially it's kind of like a motion control setup but he is doing it manually but this is what this man does and so essentially he can replicate that same speed, that same distance whenever we need him to. So for the first setup, the DP wanted a low, warm, early morning sunlight coming through the window. To achieve this, I bounced a half CT bead 5K off a poly board from behind the framed exterior background. This lights our gamer. And then another bounced 5K on the floor from a more acute angle to light the wall and help give the impression of a low morning sun. Then I added another poly board to bounce some of that light back to light the background, which I controlled with blackout to achieve just the right level. Then at the end of the day, the production team and art department switch all the set dressing and exterior background for our US set. To create a brighter midday light, I bounced an M18 HMI off a 12 by 12 ultra bounce and added a full CTB gel to one of the 5Ks to keep some light coming through the window and light our background, with an additional diffused 1K to help edge light the actor. Then after day two's wrapped, it's time for the final setup, Tokyo. The director and DP work with the art department to arrange the set dressing and practical lighting to create our Tokyo apartment night scene. For the most part, unlike the other set pieces, this is mostly lit with practical lights, or we just call them pracs. So we've got a mixture of lamps, we've got some Astera tubes going on. Uh, whenever you're working with lamps, we don't use LEDs because when you start to dim an LED bulb, it starts flickering, right? So we're still having to stick to the old school tungsten lights uh, for, for our bulbs, which we can then put on dimmers and dim down just to match that perfect kind of luminance depending on what stock we're shooting at. So yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a couple of lamps in here, we've got a tube going across there. As you can see out the window, we've also got another tube going on uh, that's giving us some kind of neon lighting from, from the Tokyo city, which is out back. Speaking of which, let's go and have a look at Tokyo. Because the Tokyo set is lit largely with practical lights which the art department are arranging along with the set dressing, I've been afforded some time to try something special with our backdrop. Okay, so less attractive, less impressive, but if we go around to the other side you'll see what we've been doing. Now for each, each set we've actually had a different backdrop printed on vinyl, which we've had to light each day because they've been daylight, right? So I've had to actually put lights onto the image in order to light it, whereas this one is a night scene. 
And so what we're doing here is actually lighting from behind. And then what I've done is basically poke lots of holes into all of these buildings here to then reveal the lights coming through from the back. So in some cases, we've actually poked all the way through, so certain lights are coming through super bright. And then on others, we've actually used the previous background and left that in there, because actually what it's done is created some different coloration, which is exactly what we need, right? We don't want all those lights to be the same color, because they just wouldn't be. And so actually, that's ended up being quite a handy little, little thing that's worked out that's actually given us some really nice colour differentiation between the different lights. And I'm literally just going through with a scalpel, just cutting out loads of windows. We haven't shot this scene yet, but once we see it in shot, I'll know if I need to add some more, bring up the luminance to, to, to offset against our interior. Now, normally it wouldn't be a gaffer's job to, uh, to, to, to be poking holes in the background. That would be art department. but. It was my idea and this cost a lot of money and so I really kind of had to take responsibility and do it myself. <laughs> but thankfully, it worked. So for our light coming in through the window, in previous sets we kind of did a mixture of either using um, blued up tungsten uh, 5Ks, bounced to give us a nice bright soft light. Uh, but in this case, it's a night scene, right? And so there wouldn't be that much coming in through the window, but this is Tokyo, and so therefore there's lots of light even at nighttime, and usually varying colors from other windows in big buildings to adverts, you know, the big backlit signs that they have that run up buildings and so on. So that's what we're looking to recreate here. And basically what I've gone for, quite simple, is I've basically got one set to a nice cool white that's just coming through as Probably, I'm guessing, you know, that might be coming off the light that's basically bouncing off the, the clouds in the sky, right? At nighttime, so much light is going up into the sky that you're going to get an overall brightness just coming in through the light, just from the city. And then we've added this blue one here as a kind of a, a motivated source for, you know, a backlit neon advert, you know, some big sign that might be just here on the other side of the building. Um, normally you wouldn't kind of throw in lights at different angles because then you start getting shadows and things but in reality in that kind of situation there's every chance you'd be getting lights coming in from all over the place so it's quite fun we get to mix it up. When we move round to our shot coming through the window of course we'll have to move these. I'm just flagging this blue light so we're still getting it in to our set but it's not spilling onto our background. And aside from the practicals and those couple of tubes we've got outside the window, the only other light that we're using is our space light up here. Now, what I've done is actually skirt it and then added drape so that we're actually extending that skirt and creating a pool of light down onto the floor, which just gives a nice kind of soft, warm tungsten glow over our performer. And then we're just using those pracks and those nice tubes coming in from the side to just give some nice colored accents. But that space light is great for just lifting the whole image a little bit. Subtly, you know. Once the set is dressed and we're happy with the lighting, it's time to shoot the first setup, which is the establishing shot tracking from the corridor to the living room where the gamer takes their seat. I watch closely on the monitor to check everything's looking good. Then we reset for the second matched shot, which tracks in on our gamer as she takes her seat. This is where we see our newly dressed window and backdrop. That skyline looks great. <laughs> At this point, I asked Jamie to run through the move to check if I need to cut any more holes in our Tokyo skyline. After adding a few more, I then look at heightening the lighting effects created by our practicals. In this case, I bring in another tube and mount it on a boom inside the set to give us a stronger and more precise edge light on our gamer. As we move in tighter and tighter, I'm able to tweak the lighting to give us some nice close-ups. This also allows the crew and art department to start breaking down any kit and dressing that's now finished with to give us as much time at the end of the day as possible. Then, once the last shot's in the bag, it's time to break everything down, ready for the next shoot. Okay, so we're down to our last 
piece of set. So we call these set flats. Generally, they come in four by eight sizes as standard. These ones are actually 10 foot tall, which is handier if you're shooting at a bit of distance and you need a bit more height on your wall. So we thought we'd just pause here before the sort of breaking down the last bits, just to kind of show you how these things are made. Um, so if you come with me around the back, so this is two set flats that have been bolted together um, and then braced with one of these, which we then wait uh, to keep them obviously from falling over. I just wanted to kind of show you how these things are kind of built. This is actually MDF, which is fairly unpleasant, but you can see that we've used these extra pieces of timber to reinforce it to stop it bowing, because when you paint MDF, it starts to warp if you don't paint both sides. A little tip for you there. As you can see, we've taken off our, our vinyls that we were using for our background. So this is, this is the frame, which actually previously we were using as a, a drop ceiling. Now it did have some issues, to be fair. Uh, these central pillars, because we were backlighting, we did actually get a bit of shadow there. Because of how we were shooting, you couldn't really pick it up. And all we were really picking up is those nice pinhole lights that we had poking through. So this is just one of the kind of benefits of shooting on a set. Obviously, we were able to set our height so that we had lights just where we want them. And ultimately, that we were able to light it really specifically. When you're working on a location, you, you get quite restricted by the space you're in, where you can have lights. If you have a really specific idea of how you want a shot to work, tracking through this thing or going through walls, all of that is stuff that you can achieve if you have a set build, as opposed to working on location, which you'll spend a lot of time looking for the right place. You may never even find the right place. So there are reasons why working on a set is really kind of a preferable way to shoot, particularly if you're looking at changing lighting situations. It also means we can shoot nighttime scenes in the middle of the day. We don't have to wait till nightfall. If it's the summertime and you need to shoot a night scene, that's problematic because in England, you're gonna be waiting till about 10 p.m. before it gets dark in the height of summer. Same goes if you wanna do a daytime shoot and you're doing it in the winter, you're so limited by the amount of time you've got to shoot. So as long as you can get your lighting right, it means you can just shoot all day or all night without having to worry about what the sun's up to. So here you can see this is the reverse side of our window flat, which we had actually three different kinds of window frames made for just to vary our sets uh, as much as we could whilst maintaining the same structure. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this little episode on set builds, working with flats, working with sets, it's because there's a major issue in the film industry, as there are with most industries around the world, which is waste. There is a huge amount of waste that goes on in the film industry, as you can probably imagine. Lots of materials and skills are thrown together for a very short period of time. So when the director calls cut, everything is torn down as quickly as possible, and more often than not, it is thrown in the skip. Obviously, that is just unacceptable by today's standards. We're starting to realize more and more now that it's just not okay to use something once and throw it away, whether it's plastic, whether it's timber, whatever it is. So obviously we run a studio here, we see a lot of builds come in and wherever we can, we try to hold on to these things and we reuse them. Now obviously that causes a storage problem. Most studios will not do that because they simply aren't willing to take on that amount of stuff on the off chance they're gonna use it. But my hippie sensibilities preclude me from just letting things get thrown away. So what we try and do is we reuse sets. And it's starting to happen more and more in the industry now. There are companies coming up, there are companies in big studios like Pinewood here in the UK that are actually there specifically to recycle sets, to recycle props, to make sure stuff isn't just getting binned. Because for decades, that has been the standard approach. You tear it down and you just throw it away. Because frankly, like everything in this world, it comes down to cost, it comes down to money. And storing stuff or putting someone in charge of recycling and, and making sure something goes to the right place so that it gets reused, that's all just billable time that a production is not willing to spend. So for the most part, it's just get rid of it, get it out, move on to the next job, right? Where we are, we're in a position to try and make some changes there, and that's what we're trying to do. And there are some really great companies, certainly here in the UK, that are doing that. And I'm sure they're doing it in other countries where there is a lot of production. So I really just wanted to take you through the kind of nature of this business and kind of demonstrate a little bit about how we're trying to change it for the better, how we're trying to save materials, reuse materials and stop waste and stop landfill. We're going to hold on to these ones. They're all really good quality. 
generally speaking, once they get used a number of times, they get wear and tear, you start getting holes in them and things like that, and it gets to a point where we need to just get rid of them because they're not usable anymore, but we will use them over and over until we absolutely can't use them again, and this is how I wish everybody would work. So, if you can take any message away from this episode, it is please consider when you're planning a production and when you're in production, what are you going to do with everything that you're using when the production is over? This is something we should all be thinking about more and more now. Just think about that and let's just try and avoid waste as much as we possibly can. So I hope that gave you a nice idea of what it's like to work on set and, and, and some reasons as to why we choose to work on sets as opposed to locations sometimes. That's about it from me. I should remind you that we have a Patreon. If you'd like to support us, please consider going there. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all of those places. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please do subscribe to the channel. It does really help us. Give us a little likey, give us some comments. Let us know if you want us to show you any more stuff on set. That's it from me. See you next time.